Good morning, everybody. I'm on my way down to take another peek at this electric fence here and uh, try to get it to where it's not shortened out. So I'm gonna go turn it off really quick. So I just turned this fence off. So this is where the short's happening because we have a split here. This is the main one that's directly tapped into the main box in the brooder hut there. And then I have two fence sections here. My dad had one go down that way and he made this into a separate paddock going this way. And so I'm noticing it's snapping and kind of shorten it right here. And so I'm kind of gonna undo all this. He's got one, two, three, four lines coming off this one. And I may have to put in another fence post close to this one and then put a jump jumper cable from these to electrify it. Or I'm gonna see if I can separate it a little bit better, maybe with some a couple more insulators, and then put a jump cable to it to properly connect the current. And, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna see what I can do here. So what I'm seeing here is that he just kind of interchanged and wrapped this smaller paddock fence in with the big paddock fence and he just kind of got these lines together so they would all be electrified. But I'm pretty sure that's what's causing a big short. And so I think I'm going to have to cut some wire here, kind of redo it some and then put a, a electrical current jump from one fence to the other. I think it's gonna, is, gonna, is what I'm gonna have to do to get it to properly connect without shorting out. So I'm gonna go get my tools. So this is what I came up with. I have a bunch of extra fence right here, but I don't want to cut it just yet until I know if it'll work. There's a problem here that this could touch this, but maybe if I put like a piece of plastic piping on this one, that might insulate it for me. Um, I got some wrapped around there. I had to cut this, this wire because it was wrapped around the other wire there. And I tied it here because I don't have the right splicer. But um, I'm going to put this last wire up and I'm going to turn it on and see if it continues snapping or not. So it's on. It's not snapping up here anymore. Which I'm happy about. But I am noticing that I'm hearing some snapping down yonder. So I'm wondering if I have another short down yonder or if it's just touching a branch or a weed. So I'm gonna check that out. But first I'm gonna see if I have power further down this line. So this thing here is called a jump connector. So this will go on one fence and this will go on to the other fence you want electrified. I put the jump connector on. I got it coming, if it'll focus. I got it coming from the main wire that has the most electric on it, and I'm putting it onto the top wire of this fence. I do have another one if I need it, but I shouldn't. So I'm gonna go turn it on before I tighten everything up and see if it works. So it's on. I hear a little bit of snapping but it's coming from this one because I have so much wire wrapped around there because I didn't want to cut the fence in case it didn't work. But I'm gonna go see if I have power down yonder.
So far, I'm getting about 4,000 volts on the upper tube, but nothing on the bottom tube. So I am getting about 600 volts down here now on the top line. I'm not getting anything on the bottom line or the middle line here. So I don't know what's going on. I should have big enough a box to power everything. I do know that this fence is really old and covered in green, green stuff. And it's frayed on the second line. It is frayed in a, a place. So I could need to replace the whole fence. But I do hear it snapping right here. Um, so I got one more idea to try. I do know that my dad has a solar box up there, right there. Um, and it is connected to this fence. So I think I'm going to reconnect it and disconnect it up there and see if I get any more power from that box. So I gotta tell you, yesterday morning I saw a cougar on our property and um, I'm gonna show you where and then I'm gonna explain what happened. So yesterday morning I took Evie out like I normally do and this is about where I was standing and she usually goes potty right in there and I was standing right here. I heard a twig snap and I looked up just in time to see the back end of a cougar right there. And that's only about 35, 40 feet from me. And Evie was right there. And so the cougar was 10 to 15 feet from her. It, it was a kind of a dark tan body with a really long tail with a black tip. I saw about two thirds of its back end. So I'm assuming it was hiding out kind of back in that area behind the horse trailer. So this is the road down to the barn and that's our barn. And that's where he was hiding out, right in there. That's kind of scary. So I came out here, I told Evie to go do her business. She was sniffing around, I heard her twig snap, I looked up in time and I saw the back end of that cougar. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that is a cougar right in front of me. And it, it was trying to hurry away, so I think we just kind of scared each other. And um... So I stopped and stood there and kind of made some noise and made sure I didn't see it anywhere else. And then I just backed towards the house and then I went into the house and then uh, told my mom that I just saw a cougar. So uh, she, she was out here with me while I fed the horses. I came back down here and fed the horses. I took the other way down through the garden so I didn't come near this area. 
but uh yeah that was a little scary <laughs> it definitely got my adrenaline pumping and I was definitely awake after that and uh yeah no signs of it this morning no signs of it today um I'm keeping my eyes out and my ears out I mean a cougar you're not really gonna know it's there unless it wants you to know it's there but you, you know still that's a little close for home I mean the house is just over there and the barn's down there and I walk this every day and that's kind of scary knowing that there's been a cougar in the area right where I walk. Another scary thing is, is that about a month, a month and a half ago, I heard a strange call behind the barn. I got done with chores, I turned the tractor off, and then I heard a weird animal call. I'm like, okay, I haven't heard that before around these parts. I wonder what it is. I made some noise, the, and then the dog barked, didn't really retreat or anything, and I continued to make noise, and then I heard a couple crashes in the, in the bushes as it moved away. And I'm wondering, huh, I wonder if that's like a cougar call or something. And then around that same time, not the same day, but the same time, my mom was taking her dog out in the evening when it was dark. And we always, we have a big, huge flashlight that's just like a big spotlight. And we always scan the edge of the bushes for any eyeballs looking at us because it's just what you do in the country, I guess. And um, she scanned it down around behind the horse trailer. And there, were, she said there was these two big kind of yellowish reflecting eyes looking at her and the dog. And so she kind of just moseyed her way back to the house, keeping an eye on it. And so I'm thinking this cougar has probably been in the area for a while. It's just we finally ran into each other is what happened, which is kind of a really scary thought that we've been living with a cougar in our yard for a while. But, you know, that's what you get when you're in the country, and that's why you're always on alert. And when you're out in the bushes, when... I'm out in the bushes. I'm always, my ears are on high alert and my eyes are on high alert. Um, I, I've grown up here since I was six years old, so it's been 23 years since we moved here. And so I've kind of just learned to keep my senses sharp and open when I'm out and about. I mean, you don't turn your back on the woods without first scanning the woods. And you have your ears constantly looking and hearing for sounds. And another thing is, you just don't ignore sounds. If you hear something, I will stop and I will listen to see if it continues or it, if it stops or if it was just a wind because you can generally tell if it's an animal. Deers have a certain sound, rabbits have a certain sound, different animals have different sounds as they're chomping through the forest. You just learn the different sounds of the different animals. But you just stop and you listen and you decipher and discern which one it is and I've done that a lot. There's a couple times where I'm like, oh, you know, then you hear the deer, then oh, then you hear the rabbit. There's just different sounds. But cougars are like another different story. You really can't hear them, so it's kind of scary. So, you know, it kind of, it's a wake-up call to be more adamant about your surroundings. And even though you're half asleep when you walk out at 6 in the morning taking your dog out, make sure you be adamant and keep your eyes and your ears well open. So, I had an idea because obviously this solar box isn't working. I checked it out and it's not working. But I do have another solar fence charger and I'm going to put, this one was working. I tested it out up at the house. This is our upper property line fence solar fence charger and I'm going to put it on this one to see if this will power this fence. It should because this one powered the fence and these are the same voltage and everything so it should work. So I'm gonna install this one. I'm gonna go get the proper insulated wire, bleh, the proper insulated wire to connect it to the electric tape. Right now it's just this little rinky dink wire right here that's rusted through. So I'm going to go get some insulated wire to correctly tap it into the fence here. I got my insulated right wire here. Wire. Wow. Can't talk this morning. Well, it's afternoon now. So we got about a thousand volts up close 
I'm gonna check down further, further down the fence to see how much I got. So I got about a thousand volts on the middle line there, but I don't have anything on the top line or the bottom line. The top line is not connected to that box. From what I can tell, it's not connected to it. All this area is electrified, all this fence here. So I don't know why this one isn't wanting to work. It says it's working, but it's not. I put the fence charger right on this and I put it on the grounding pole and it had nothing, no reading whatsoever. So I don't know what's going on with it. I'll have to maybe fiddle with it another day, but these things are pretty nice. I like them. They're not definitely not as powerful unless you get the huge ones as your your big electric boxes, but when you don't have a spot to plug in electric, they're really nice. So I really thought that this would be an easy fix on this fence, but it's turning out to be a harder fix. And I'm learning a lot. And, um, you know, it is discouraging and you do feel like you failed because your ideas didn't work. But this is what I do know. That if you let the feeling of failure keep you from trying something, you know, that's not good. Because failure is there to help you grow and to learn. That's, that's why it's there. Um, if you didn't fail, you wouldn't learn. That's just how it is. So one thing I've learned, especially in the last like five years, is that if you keep, if you let failure keep you from trying or starting something new that you're scared of, then you're going to stay stuck. But if you try it, even if you do fail, you can learn from it. And if you learn from it, that's where real growth takes place and happens. So I just want to encourage you that even though some things in life may seem to come against you, you seem to fail, you seem to make mistakes, you seem to just can't move on from it, stop, take a moment, think about it, and try again. Either try it a different way, try it from a different approach, get advice on it, maybe reach out for help, but just try. Don't let the fear of failure keep you from trying because... That's where growth happens. Growth happens when you do. And when you do, things get done, even if it's a teeny tiny step at a time because you're, it's a huge learning curve, it's still a step in the right direction. So keep going, keep pursuing, and keep trying to do things that will help you with your growth. I want to say thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you got encouragement from it. I hope you learned something from it. Thank you so much for taking the time and taking a moment to go along on my day with me. And um, I hope to see you next time. Bye.